What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the Elder Scrolls podcast with Fudge Muppet. My name is Scott, and we're here with Michael and Drew. And today we're discussing the Dwemer in their totality. So, um, for those of you out there who are confused, there are three of us, and you do hear separate voices sometimes, but sometimes you can't tell the difference between Michael and I. But, uh, yeah, we made a community post announcing the podcast, and um, to give you the short of it, this is an open discussion podcast where we discuss all different parts of the Elder Scrolls, a lot of lore discussion, but also other Elder Scrolls related topics. We encourage you to ask questions and so on, and we make community posts about it before they come out. But uh, let's get right into the Dwemer. Boys, how would you describe the Dwemer to someone who has no idea who they are? Gosh. Um... Well, they're not dwarves. That's that's a good way to start it. They're not literally dwarves. Yeah, that is that is true. And then, like, actually, um, there was some recent. I think it is from Elder Scrolls Online stuff. But there was because the, originally there was they're called dwarves because people speculated because the giants that were there called them dwarves because they were small to them. But um, and then there was translations to deep elves. Um, it, the Dwemer might. But then there was another translation calling it. Um, I think it was smart elves or something like that. Yeah, I've actually but, I've actually heard that the deep elves could also reference that they're deep, as in like intelligent, like mentally deep. <laughs> yeah. Not even as a I joke. Mean, although, this is it was somewhere it was somewhere um, legitimate. I think it was an in-game text even. Although when I, but when I hear deep though, oh, I guess it applies. But when I hear like deep, I usually think like philosophical. Not. Oh, like I'm thinking academic. underground. Well, I yeah, do. No, yeah. I mean deep oh, okay. in that right. context. Yeah. Yeah, I thought you but, meant when you um, thought of the Dwemer as the deep ones, but yeah. Yeah, I feel like everyone here who is watching a podcast dedicated to the Dwemer has some idea of who they are, but essentially they're just they're sort of like the thematic antithesis to the Chimer and Dunma. They're like these super fedorative being. <laughs> like they, we'll talk about this, but they're not atheist. Or I guess how you divvy up the the definition of that because atheist is just sort of like not having or I mean, not believing in a god, but the way that they look at gods as they don't see them as gods, they just see them as larger, powerful souls. If that makes yeah, sense, like they, they a, there is a they distinction. Don't, they don't deny that the Daedra and the Aedra, for example, are really powerful beings. It's more they just choose not to revere them, not to worship them. You know, they're, they're off to make their own god and, you know, worship. They it, it, they say the gods of logic and wisdom, but not actual beings, just logic. Yeah, because we do see them interact with gods reason. like Azura uh, in, 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 in usually tricking them, if anything. So they, they wouldn't be atheists because they acknowledge their existence. They just don't exactly, you know, worship them. Yeah, they don't. It seems that they don't have like like a theology around it kind of stuff there's not like they kind of do away with well i mean all of them would have traditions and stuff to hold but like um they don't have all of the i guess like spirituality is kind of thing that the can't have you know what i mean kind of yeah i mean they do try and make their own god which we'll, we'll get to well that's um, the thing to, to me i always see the dwemer and that's a good way to describe it to someone who doesn't know what they are they're the elves who have that kind of scientist theme that you see in a lot of movies where they're trying to you know play god and 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 go too far almost with technology i mean perhaps they did and that's why they disappeared um but yeah, yeah. They're, they're all about their tech superpowers and just pushing things to the limit using their own abilities, their own brains, their own knowledge and practice of magic as opposed to, you know, getting on their knees and kneeling b before some god and saying, please give me power. They're like, I'm going to get power myself. So they're kind of taking, I guess, their fate into their own hands. Yeah. Like we, we were actually, I was discussing this with Michael um, yesterday, actually, and it was about just how um you know we'll get into the metaphysical stuff now we may as well like we're on the right so but um that most of the civilizations and cultures and so on they're all kind of looking for like transcendence i mean you could even argue that people like today in real life world look for some form of transcendence or like greater purpose meaning so on but in the elder scrolls world that's usually through like attaining sort of like spiritual kind of power or enlightenment or so on and then so for example the idea with the thalmor is that or the big that sort of 
it's not exactly strictly canon, but the one of the big theories they want to unmake the world so they can go back to being um, spirits and stuff like they were before, before Lorcan trapped them in this realm of mortality. But most of them are concerned with, most cultures are con have some form of like seeking of enlightenment. And for the Chimera, it's the sort of the decidic endeavor. So they're trying to find like, they're trying to get outside of it by beating sort of, it kind of comes from like a spiritual introspective sort of philosophical way of beating it. Whereas like the Dwemers kind of theme on the opposite is kind of using tools and technology to beat transcendence in this other way, which is all related to the Numidium that they're trying to build themselves their own God. And, and that uh, ruins a lot of things for the future of the, not in a bad way, but I mean, it just does a lot of. Well, I think it's a common theme with the races of elves to, you know, where a lot of humans will just, be grateful to the gods for giving them existence. The elves in their own unique ways are like, no, that's where we want to be. We want to get back there. And they kind of have their different approaches. As you said, with the Falmor, they kind of are, are almost trying to undo the world so they can get back there. The Kaima and the Dunma, they're trying to overcome it and, you know, become above it. Whereas the Dwemer, you know, they're using tools to kind of rival the gods, the kind of going their own way with it, which is their yeah. form of atheism, if like you the, call it the that. Dwemer and, the Dwemer and Kymer are sort of on the same track in, in kind of like they're trying to beat Lorcan's kind of prison, whereas the High Elves, or I guess probably just traditional Oldma thought, um, derived thought, is just let's break down his prison if you can. Like basically they just kind of, they don't want to... Do you know what I mean? It's like kind of tossing the Monopoly board aside rather than trying to just win at Monopoly. Yeah, for you know? sure. 100%. But um, let's move on. We'll talk about how... So the Dwemer aren't actually originally... Um, they're not just in Morrowind. They're sort of everywhere. They're basically, all elves are supposedly derived from the old Ma, like the, the big proto-elf from ancient, which and then before that is kind of like the old Elnafe. So all... That's where they all come from, supposedly. Like, we still don't know about, like, left-handed elves strictly or some of the other varieties and so on. But um, most of them we can track to a degree. Like, even though it's still all up in the air, like even the wood elves or the, or the Khajiit and whether they are or not, whether they are or aren't elves is kind of tricky. But the Dwemer, we kind of don't know strictly. If they're um, elves they or not, or... Well, not if they're elves or not. Because I was going to say that they're they... definitely... Well, it's whether <laughs> they descend elves. from the old Malign. Or yeah. like, you know, yeah. ex explicitly come from the Somerset Isles slash old Elnafe. You know, how they got... Came from old Elnafe, which is debatable in itself, if it exists. But that's mm. another topic altogether. Getting to Somerset Isles and then spreading out where they go. You know, they, there's the idea that the Bosma were always in Valenwood. And there's the idea that the Dwemer were always underground in the north and whatnot. So... It doesn't. It's not really clear whether they made right. their exodus like the Kaima did, for example. Yeah. Well, there is. Let's like put to rest one of the ones that I think is the least likely, um, based on everything else. But there are some people that refer to or some sources and so on that refer to them as a sort of like great house or a clan kind of thing. It sort of kind of gives you this implied idea that they're kind of like a split off of the Kaima that was a particular secular house and they were very. But. There's other things um, just in the timeline and so on that kind of imply that they were there already before or they were there with the Velothi before they degenerated into like the later Kaima culture kind of stuff. But um, so if you can dismiss, not dismiss that, like it's a potential, um, potentially an option, but I reckon we should talk about more so where we think they came from. So Drew... Hit us where you think they came from. Let's hear your head cannon. Well, I don't think they came from old Elnafe. That much is certain. I mean, I don't think any of them... Do, do you mean, like, geographically? Well, well how, about, how about we hit with this for a classification will probably, probably help a lot. Is do, we, do you go with the idea that, that Tamriel itself is old Elnafe or, like, Aldmeris? Like, it's, it's sort of... The idea of Aldmeris is it's not this actual separate location that they came from. It's just as a result of the war between the old Elnafe and the wandering Elnafe, there's like a big scattering and um, they're all split all over the place. So like, personally, I sort of subscribe to the theory that Aldmeris was Tamriel, like it's just changed yeah. and broken in the big godly wars and so on. 
So yeah, pretty much the, the reason I think the Dwemer definitely didn't originate from the same place as the Old Mer is because I've talked about it in a few videos, but I subscribe to the idea that Old Meris is a mindset and the Dwemer don't have the same mindset as the High Elves and because the High Elves are the closest, you'd say, to the uh, to the initial Oldmer state of mind. So if if Old Meris, Old Elnafe is a state of mind and it just means Tamriel, but it's just, you know, they're they're spreading out from the initial culture, then the Dwemer couldn't be anything further from Oldma and therefore couldn't be anything further from Old Meris. Well, the interesting right. the interesting way that I would look at things, though, is definitely if you look at their alphabets, like if you go and you look at the Dwemer's alphabet, the Aelid's alphabet, the Falmer alphabet, the Altma alphabet, um, they're all extremely similar. So in my head canon, they're, they're all descended from the Oldma. Um, I just get the vibe that they were in um, other places before the Kaima got there. Yeah, like if we were if we were to play a probability game, they they're most likely derived from the Oldma in some way, and, and most elves are. It's just kind of a matter of of when and how. But I think some of the divisions might have actually happened a lot earlier than um, you're led to believe. Sometimes, just for example, like where do the snow elves come in? Like where? When were they there, or were they always there from the times when Tamriel was Old Elnafe or Aldmeris? Let's just use the term. And Aldmeris that's if we to... that's if we take that as canon as well, because we don't know for sure that Old no, Maris yeah, wasn't a this place is... that's separate. It's just kind of it makes a lot of things make sense if you treat it as if that were the case. Yeah, perhaps it's a video idea that um, we should do is but trying to reconcile all of the early myths and so on and try and make it all work and gel together like because i know that it's easier to explain um wood elves and nords and snow elves and so on and a bunch of their mythologies if the idea is that tamriel is aldmeris originally was and there are like direct uh drew you'd know there's direct um quotes and stuff that do say that don't they? yeah yeah it, it alludes to the idea that the sundering of aldmeris is literally just people like the Kaima going away from the initial culture. That's the sundering. So that's the sinking of Old Maris rather than the continent literally sinking under the ocean. Right. Right. That's interesting. Mm. Yeah. Cause but this is what's going to happen. Like with these discussions guys, as we're going to end up, they get hyper theoretical cause you're dealing with elder scrolls and there are no straight answers. There's basically you can only play with what evidence you've got and there's unreliable narrator, but it's also just, you kind of just got to play the probability game. And, and sometimes the way we tell certain videos and stories is we kind of tell it through the lens of certain um, races and so on and sort of their understanding. But like, yeah, just because you read it in a book doesn't mean it's 100% true. You've kind of got to like contrast it against everything else and try and see where it goes. But well, let's say... We know that they were there, the Dwemer were there at um, the time of the Velothi. So when the Velothi culture, so after the Kaima came, well, by the way, for everyone who doesn't know, so Kaima is just, that's the um, changed ones, which are basically, they were just like Ultima. They left the Somerset Isles um, because of the three Daedra, Azura, Mephalo, and Boethia, um, following Velo, the prophet named Veloth. And then they went to, uh, Re they found Resdane, which was Morrowind. It's just ancient Morrowind. And um, that's why they're often called the Velothi people. And then hence the culture that was there was high Velothi culture. But around the same time, there was um, Dwemer strongholds and stuff being created. So the Dwemer were sort of, it seems that they were there already before the, the Kaima came. So it, that's another thing too. It's like, it's trying to math out when, when the Wood Elves came and then when the like if they all came from high elves you know what i mean like if they're all from somerset isles like w when did the snow elves um arrive in well, skyrim for example one thing that's interesting like, is is you can kind of look at it like you know say you've got the the theory of evolution f for our world you can almost look at the elder scrolls like a reverse of that it's a theory like the theory of devolution that they come from you know the adra the gods then becoming the Elnafe, the original spirits, the Atada. So the idea is that, you know, are, are the Oldma, the 
the joining block between the Atada and the races of Elf? Or did the Aldma kind of come out separately from the Bosma, separately from the Snow Elves and, and all of that? So it's kind of difficult to say because, you know, the earlier you go back, the more confusing everything becomes and you can't s tr see the lineages. But of course, they're all Mer, so you'd think they're more related than the humans and whatnot. So that's why I'm not sure whether they're Aldma It's kind of at making, all. like, I think it was in the book before the Ages of Man does mention that the Dwemer were from, let me just double check, it was from, they set up strongholds and stuff in the Velothi Mountains, and that's all including up sort of parts of sort of Skyrim and Morrowind and so on. So let's just talk about, because I'm trying to determine, like a lot of people who played um, Skyrim mainly, so a lot of the listeners and so on, that's how they got introduced to the dwarves and so on, and they're spread all over Skyrim and underneath. But there's a lot of like, um, stuff to discuss about when they exactly sort of arrived in Skyrim. So if they were originally there when the Chimera arrived, they were in in the Velothi Mountain region at least. So they were in um, parts of Morrowind, parts of Skyrim. And you could kind of assume that the eastern strongholds of, uh, of Skyrim, the Dwemer strongholds there, that have kind of been there for a long time. But then it's also like the, the Snow Elves were also there at that point. Like, I, I think we'll... we'll probably derail this if we start going too far back and trying to, de to determine exactly when Snow Elves and, and the Dwemer were sort of there, but we kind of just have to accept, I guess, that they're there for the point of discussion at that time. But the interesting thing is that they, they were also in Hammerfell, but much later on. Like, this is all first era kind of stuff when they, when they come in Hammerfell. So, I don't know. Boys, what's your thoughts <laughs> on... Um, Dwemer expansion. Well, I mean, in terms of the Snow Elves, you know, I was writing about it in the recent Snow Elf video. It seems like they were coexist. Well, you can call it coexisting, but it's pretty easy to coexist when one of you wants the surface and the rest of you want underground. But it seems as though they were getting on pretty well or like fine before the the Atmorans came. But I, I don't know. Some Needic settlers would have come earlier, obviously, than than the Atmorans, but um, the idea is that Skyrim would have been pretty well inhabited by a Dwemer well, a he... fair bit before Isgrimor and his companions came along. Yeah, it's, it's really hard to tell, actually, because a lot of the Dwemer would... Because if you read some of the, the books and stuff in-game, they talk about how some of the Dwemer, uh, you know, cities and stuff, they really just look like outposts on the top, unless you could find your way inside. And they specifically would build kind of, it depends where geographically, but they would specifically build kind of like, you know, they've got some supply rooms, some basic stuff on the top, but it's not until you dive deeper using, I guess, secret mechanisms um, that you find like, you know, all the big rooms and all the cool stuff. So a lot of explorers would kind of come in, look around, be like, oh, it's just an outpost and leave. Um, but you just don't know how big each of those places could be you don't know how long they've been there so you could kind of talk about it all day but at the end of the day it is a mystery well one thing to consider too is that most of the dwemer strongholds all over skyrim like right across are filled with falmer and so on and so you assume that the snow elves were there like and throughout black reach and you know how far that reaches especially with um, the Greymore DLC showing that it expands even further. Yeah. But so you have you have the Dwemer there, and if there are Falmer there, uh, also, it kind of t to me a bit that that kind of implies that the 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 Dwemer were stretched to that extent or over Skyrim when Isgrimor and stuff first showed up, and then started getting rid of all of the Snow Elves, and the Snow Elves had to find somewhere else to go, and then they went, you know underneath to to the um to the dwemer and made their their deal and they got all blinded and so on but like skyrim was pretty solidly dwemer at that point i 100 we percent agree 100 yeah. percent. um you even think about the war that happened the war of the crag between the Fulmer and the the dwemer like when yeah. when they finally rebelled that war is meant to last for decades right it's it's yeah. not like a little skirmish that went on in the Black Reach that you can explore in Skyrim. It's a decades long war in Black Reach, which based on Elder Scrolls Online now stretches far beyond what anyone thought just by playing Skyrim. 
right? So you have to have a lot of room. I mean, I'm not a war expert, but I can only assume you need a lot of room to have a decade long war and a lot of, yeah. a lot of units fighting, a lot of Falmer fighting, a lot of Dwemer. Um, otherwise, it just wouldn't last that long. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's no, I, just my take. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I, I think I think Skyrim being settled by the Dwemer for a long time makes more sense. And then, yeah, I, I don't think it was mainly red. Like ham, the whole clan, Rock and clan crag and stuff. I don't think their expansion into Skyrim was too, um, from Hammerfell was too significant. Or like super new and they're like, oh, we're the Dwemer new, coming yeah. in and there's never been heaps of Dwemer here before. Yeah, I think there was plenty of Dwemer yeah. there. I mean, the other part to talk about Skyrim is there is the Ethereum Wars and so on. Like, And I guess really we won't go too much into that, but I think it is just a point to something to point out that just the Dwemer weren't like completely unified. Obviously, they had like clan, all these separate clans and different strongholds and, and colonies that fought amongst one another. And just as a point, I just want to throw out there is that you, when you're looking at law and stuff like that, you don't want to treat races as like monocultural. Like Dwemer, like you, so, you know, arguably, like some Dwemer might be the religious types. They might like to pray to some gods or something like that even if it was just among the commoners or something like it, what I'm just saying is you can't expect an entire race to be ideologically consistent. Like there's always going to be variation. Yeah. The, the, they'll stuff. be mainly consistent, but there can absolutely be offshoots. Yeah. Like I, I, I've actually lost the source now, but I saw someone ages ago, try and make some kind of theory that maybe the Dwemer worshiped Xarxes, right? Like this Adric God um, involved yeah. with knowledge. Right. So, that could be the case that a little offshoot did, but See, it doesn't mean the, that they all did. There's an interesting thing too with just, um, is it's easier to identify kind of um, going back to the sort of genealogy kind of thing. When you can kind of look at like high elves and then wood elves and like, oh, they have these similar gods and so on. And we, we sort of know the Veloth story. So we know how the Velothi got there, um, got to uh, Resdane or Morrowind. Um, because the Dwemer don't have gods or they don't really talk about them much, we, we don't really see that like common connection, like cultural connection there. So it's harder to kind of determine where they're from. Like even the Snow Elves, you're like, they sort of seem to have Auriel and, and, and that kind of thing going. So you're like, oh, you know, pretty high elven sort of related. But... Um, oh, for sure. For, for yeah. me, the biggest connection between them and the other elven races is the language. To me, that is the number yeah. one give away the chances are slim to none that they would have the same, you know, marking for T, for B, for M, like for whatever. Um, yeah. All across Tamriel, across different, you know, provinces, different races. Um, I mean, I'm not sure if the the Falmer riding is kind of like the same as Snow Elf riding or if it changed and they kind of well, learned from the, the Dwemer. Like, I'm not sure. But from... the other races, like even Aelids. They wrote very yeah. similarly. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, we'll get caught up on that, but I just want to bring that up. But let, let's talk about um, tonal architecture because that's, the, that's the, the key to so much of Dwemer technology and, and epic craziness, you know, <laughs> like all of their cool stuff, like them being able to, like Dwarven Metal, for example. So l let's talk about tonal architecture. I'll just give a quick framework and then i'll let you guys start explaining the the gaps um but tonal arc basically there's the idea that the elder scrolls universe is like musical it's all vibrations and so on right i mean there's such theories about our own universe everything's all vibrations man yep. so same kind of deal but a lot of the so there's the there's your magicka there's magic which is from Aetherius that leaks in through the sun and the stars. And that's your traditional magic or sort of magic. But then, you know, how there's these special power things like the thorm or dragon shouts. It's a vocal sound. It's the voice, but it's not using magicka. It's, it's, it's literally manipulating the universe's rules. And the same sort of thing goes for sword singing, which is like this idea of singing in a, in a, in a blade, in this big spirit blade kind of thing. So tonal architecture, tonal, it's the idea of they're using, they're bending the universe's rules with these sort of tonal tools and stuff. And tonal 
it's kind of an interesting thing too, just to talk how the Dwemer are like these sciencey sort of engineering focused ones, and they're kind of using all of this tonal architecture and tools and stuff to they're using technology to bend the universe versus something like sword singing or thorn which is kind of using the bending the universe's rules from a like inner enlightenment because the gray beards are all up there like you know um practicing the voice and all that kind of stuff or the sword singing is a high form of enlightenment and then even like getting to more obscure things like kim and so on and that kind of enlightenment it's it's all coming from an inner development whereas the Dwemer is sort of like tonal architecture, it's like a, you know what I mean? It's like using technology to change things. It doesn't require the inner development, besides on an academic level, which is obviously a huge accomplishment anyway, but um, yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, even like you look at the Dwemer weaponry and armor, there are some contradictory sources, but generally speaking, the idea is that it's retained its quality and it hasn't rusted and degraded um because and same with some of the automatons and stuff like they're all still working and they talk about how the metals don't obey the laws of time because tonal architecture kind of <laughs> made it so that it didn't have to right uh, the reason i say it contradicts is because some of the sources talk about dwemer uh dwarven weaponry and say like oh it retains a pretty good edge considering how old it is and i think that's just the way they wrote the text but when I hear that, at least, I kind of think, oh, so it's like a tiny bit degraded, but not much. Yeah. But if it was, if they use tonal architecture, in theory, shouldn't it be in perfect condition or, or what? Yeah, because I mean, it can still be chipped and damaged, right, over time. Like, because you can still yeah. use a dwarven. It's just kind of, I guess the main thing is the, the, the rust. It doesn't corrode and stuff. Because even if you go through the Dwemer ruins, if they use that stuff for the, for the stone buildings the stone buildings will still have like chips and, and stuff like that. It doesn't mm. make it invulnerable. It's just kind of, they're taking out the the effect of time on it. So it's not kind of gonna, or it's not even necessarily time. It could be all kinds of crazy universe bending, not understand, you know what I mean? Like it's not, Yeah. yeah. These, these kinds of things aren't meant to be understood. A lot of the time they're a little MacGuff and they're just like, you know, click, super powered metal. Why? Because I'm bending the rules of the universe but with tools, so it's cool. But but um, tonal architecture is basically the, you know, Bethesda or the writer's way of explaining how all of the cool Dwemer ruins are still around and not degraded and all of their machines still work because at the core, it's mainly, most of the time it's in reference to their metal, um, why it lasts so long and like doesn't rust and destroy and so on. But obviously we know that tonal architecture um, or variations of, or whatever, have been used to um, to go for other goals and so on, like leeching divine power from the heart of Lorcan and you know the tools of Kagranak and and stuff like this as well. I mean, that well, that's one thing that I was just going to say. It's one thing I think is interesting about the idea of them migrating around and still seeing them pull off ingenious feats because. When I think of the Dwemer initially, I'm thinking, you know, they, they channel steam, they channel the power of, like, you know, geothermal power, so being near volcanoes and active lava sources. But I always thought that part of their magic, part of, you know, perhaps even tied to their tonal architecture, is kind of just coincidental because of their proximity to the heart of Lorcan for so long. You know, like, being close to the heart of Lorcan would have helped kind of power them when they were focused around Vardenfell and Morrowind, and then spreading out. I, I thought you'd see the kind of the powers right, wane a bit. Right, geothermal. You know? L yeah, because, well, like, you know, the idea is that they use steam and then, you know, like, lava, geothermal power to essentially, like, that was their way of creating life. So, you know, their spheres and centurions and whatnot would be, you know, almost like that's their equivalent to creating right. life. But, you know, like the power of the heart of Lorcan would have explained why they were so capable of creating life by sheer proximity. Right, right. Okay. You know, yeah, so... Interesting. There is... Uh, I'll just cut in and say, I can't remember which game it is. Uh, could easily be Morrowind. I mean, it should be. I don't think it's Elder Scrolls Online. But they were say saying something about if you take a dwarven sphere far enough away from the heart that it shuts down... I remember hearing that too. Yeah, I don't know where it's from. What, yeah. what what I've heard definitely it from. heard it. No, yeah. no, that's cool. That's, it's, so it's kind of like a... Um, so I guess the, the theory there would be that the heart of Lorcan sort of helped them develop the automaton technology and so on. And then that's, and that's how it spread from there. 
But then I guess they're, but they're, yeah. Yeah, and then it all. But it then all, there's yeah. automatons and stuff, and all the Dwemer Owens in Hammerfell and stuff as well. Yeah, exactly. So seeing them spread, I, you know, it's it's interesting to see. I mean, we we haven't really properly explored Hammerfell's Dwemer ruins, except yeah, maybe in a, ESO. There's a few in ESO, but, but it, it it's hard like, to see clearly. I, I I think, I think it could also be a little caught up in like game design intention. Like originally, Morrowind Dwemer were more like just sort of Eastern Skyrim, Morrowind kind of thing, and then gradually... Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, Clan Rock and stuff was there from ages ago, but... But, yeah, there was never any mention of how Clan Rock and adapted to their yeah. new environment, in at least in terms of their magic. But, you know, that's one of those kind of awkward things about having new people follow up with the lore, that something that may have initially been intended may yeah. just kind of no longer be rele as sure. relevant. I've actually got the source here from Morrowind. Um, it's Cornelius's report, and uh, he's talking about uh, excavation and stuff, but he's saying, I also heard a strange story about the Centurion spider that we captured and sent back to Cyrodiil. The ship captain I hired wrote to me with an odd story. He said that the spider nearly broke through its through its cage several times while near Vardenfell, but once he left the Sea of Ghosts, the Centurion suddenly stopped working. What happened next shows that he had more wits than I gave him credit for. He ordered the ship turned about, and as they approached Vardenfell again, the Centurion began moving just as suddenly. This is a curious phenomenon and certainly deserves more investigation. So that's where it's from. Um, it was a Morrowind lore thing, so maybe at that time they weren't thinking about having uh dwarven centurions and or automatons in other games i'm not sure although here's a little mm. I'm, I'm just checking through just remember here's a little a little theory for you so okay i've just looked at one so the steam centurions in morrowind if you like kill them and scrap them right they have just scrap metal on them oh, they don't have soul, gems, soul gems. So hold on i'm just checking the centurion sphere as well just to, um yeah, scrap metal. So they don't have these soul gems and stuff. So maybe the use of soul gems in the Dwemer automatons is like the workaround for not being close to the heart of Lorcan. Yep. So there's a different power source. Yeah, that makes uh, that makes a lot of sense. That one, I think. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. That's really cool. And I also wondered as well how the soul gems kind of lasted um, so long. But then I wondered, maybe they manipulate. I mean, we don't know exactly how it all works, but maybe they manipulated, you know, time itself with tonal architecture, so the soul gems don't like run out. Yeah, soul gems. Soul gems are a tricky thing in themselves yeah. because of the whole interplay with the soul can and and how they drain sure. and, and all that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, so so the epitome of tonal architecture, kind of like the the craft lord Kagranak was built Keening, Wraithguard, and Sunder, the three tools used to um, tap into the power of the heart of Lorcan. And, and this, is, this is a pivotal moment for the Dwemer because this caused the War of the First Council. So the originally, just for a little background, so Dwemer and Kami didn't like each other at all. Then the Nords Empire comes along and they're, they're spread out and they've conquered everything. They've conquered all of Resdane. But then Lord Indoral Nerevar and Dumak Dwarf King, the leader of the dwarves, they become buddy buddy, team up together, and together they push out the Nords and they liberate Resdane from the Nordic Empire, and then that collapses and stuff later on. But so there's about I think it's around three hundred ish years or just under. I'll actually find the exact date. It was uh, yeah, so four four sixteen of the first era. So it's going to be just under three hundred years. But the War of the First Council um, breaks out in six sixty eight of the first era right and okay. then that culminates yeah. in the battle of red mountain in year 700 but the reason the war of the council uh first war of the first council broke out is because of basically kagranak messing around with what they would what the kaima considered who were quite a religious people as like this is like profane this is this is heretical so um and also i don't think you'd like the idea of you know because they, they as much as they were allies at the time it's like they are also that there's rivalries and stuff, and you don't really like the idea of them creating their their own super god. 
because the it's 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 like if one country made an alliance with the other and then found out that the other one who they used to be enemies with oh we've got nukes now yeah like you don't but we do it's it, it kind of creates a uneasy tension because there's a big power balance yeah yeah so so then the war a big shift war of the council breaks out then there is the completely the very confusing thing called the battle of red mountain which because of dragon breaks and all kinds of stuff various versions of events or or that could all be bullshit you don't know but basically um the result of the battle of red mountain is that three tribunal gods the, the tribunal gods amalexia sothasil and vivek they appear and they're they're all the you know super powered gods of morrowind now and the, the dwemer just went poof they're gone everywhere on tamriel seemingly so that's in um hammerfell that's in skyrim they all just disappeared all of a sudden but there are exceptions so there's jaeger and Bagan, who um was in oblivion at the time of that so so there's there's a lots of so we'll, well let's talk about the the disappearance i think as a whole so i'll i'll, I'll let Drew, hit me with what? What's your take on their disappearance? Like, what? What do you think it is? I mean, this this is a a rabbit hole. And to be fair, like, a lot of people would argue against this because, as far as I can remember, most of this is coda. So it's like outside of confirmed in-game law. But there's the concept of the zero sum. So the idea is that you know, put put simply. With the, with the power of the tools and the heart of Lorcan, the ability to achieve divinity. Uh, the reason I like this theory is because the Dwemer are so mm. logical. So the idea is that, you know, they've achieved divinity essentially in one moment when they channel the, the heart of Lorcan with these tools. And then they're faced with the reality that they, no lo- that they don't really exist. They're just part of the Godhead's dream, which is, you know, another 20 minute discussion right there. But... So what happens when you're faced with the reality that you don't exist? Do you continue to live on and become a god and you're all powerful because you're lucid dreaming, yeah. essentially? Um, or are you so logical and intelligent that you're like, well, I don't exist, so I can't possibly yeah, still it seems take like, part. So then you zero yeah, sum like and Yeah, like they can't and handle gone. the contradiction. Because to, to both, to both, like, so for Vivek achieving Kim, it's like he could both go, I'm just part of this Godhead's dream, but then at the same time, contradictory, he has to be able to be like, I am me still. I'm still, uh, you, know, you know what I mean? So, you know, and, and for someone that's so, uh, you know, the Dwemer being so logical and they're like, they need this perfect framework and everything needs to make sense, that, yeah, they zero summed. There are, okay, there are, look, there are some, flaws with that idea because i i usually I, that's usually what i lent to before but um and it's still plausible um but the thing is there's um with the zero summing like how like so obvious well i mean obviously only some of them had that like so the idea was that they all reached that divinity moment or something with this with a hard lock on the activation of the medium the medium um that simultaneously all of them kind of got that understanding the idea was that it was because of that like telepathic ability the calling right um but eso has elaborated on that further where they've basically that the calling is not an innate telepathic ability that it's like essentially like it's a, a, phone it's a helmet you know like <laughs> it, like like what michael's wearing right now is just this is what Dwemer had and they're communicating like like us and that's so you know they hop on skype and they're like having a conversation didn't didn't drew say that dj kagranak dropped a remix that was <laughs> yeah. so lit the entire race disappeared yeah. that's my that's my take and then and that would explain why two that would explain two things why jaeger and Bagan didn't because he wasn't he wasn't he didn't join the call so he because he was off in oblivion <laughs> he didn't have reception <laughs> and then the go because another thing they point to is the ghosts but like the dwemer who are ghosts are dead already like you know what i mean they can die before they could have died in the war of the, of the first council before that they all got together so their souls or consciousness are sort of like separate from you know they're not receiving the skype call that says so what you're so what you're saying is basically it only makes sense for people to disappear who are kind well, of yeah, aware they have of to be what's faced going with on the truth so if they weren't faced like it doesn't mean the whole race has to disappear for example you could come to this same conclusion you could achieve divinity through something and then you can't rationalize your existence 
But you could, you could even have that, you know, and maybe at the same time I come to that conclusion, maybe we both disappear, but Michael doesn't have to disappear then. Because yeah. he's just like, well, no, but like, but you're a human. Doesn't mean all humans have to disappear because you can't rationalize their existence. Does that make sense? Mm. I, I, I guess what yeah. you're kind of saying is like, unless this calling thing telepathically mind controls them all as well, they don't all have to think the same way about the same experience. Like some, some could disappear, some couldn't. And Sotha still actually has a quote. He says something like, don't think about why the Dwemer disappeared. Think about why not all of them did. Yeah. So like, well, there, there is future hmm. Greymore ESO stuff. There's this time traveler dude, like a Thad Thaddeus Cosmo or something like that. Um, hmm. And it, it adds more time travel, like leniency. So, so the whole time travel thing is another explanation is that the Dwemer either, they could either go forward or back in time, right? And let's just assume they go forward. But the because then we haven't interacted with them and it doesn't like retroactively change the past either but that is kind of that is on on theme with them like consider that the numidium their big god that they created this giant brass golem is like a time wrecking machine and and in the future it's used multiple times to cause a lot of problems with the timeline now the giant time it's like a time machine combined with a nuke and um so it would be on theme for them to have like time breaking, time traveling things like in this dragon break kind of thing that the Numidium, the Numidium does. It might like send them forward in future or back or, or, or whatever. So there is sort of like this, you, the whole like going forward or back in time is another kind of theory for them, which, which fits. The other one mm. is also that they just became, literally became the skin of the Numidium. So they, the Dwemer race as a whole sort of became part of the Numidium and made the Numidium what it is and, and be able to be used. Um, but yeah, I mean, it kind of gets a little hard. Yeah. I mean, feel free to tear this down because I'm only just thinking of this right now and I don't think it would work with the idea of ghosts not disappearing, but you can also draw a parallel to what happened when um, the tribunal, Amlexia, um, Sovacil and Vivek, channeled the heart of Lorcan is that they were punished by Azura. So then their whole race suffered something, but obviously they were told in advance, don't do that or I'll punish you essentially. Whereas you could almost think, oh, it, it was Kag Kagranak's great blasphemy punished by someone. And you know, you, you, it's hard to say who, because yeah. you know, Lorcan's a dead God, but like, you know, say for, ex for instance, he would have punished them. It would make sense why Yagra and Bagan wouldn't be punished because He's not in the mortal realm, so he's not subject to the physics of disappearing from the mortal realm, for example. And it, and it kind of aligns with the idea of um, the Dunma being yeah, punished. Yeah, I see what you mean. For, but, um, but even then, it's pretty harsh to punish, you know, some random Dwemer fighting in the War of the Crag right now by, you know, Kagranax doing something and, and yeah, you get punished for it. So it's a, that, it's would, cool. that wouldn't be unusual for the Elder Scrolls universe. I mean, <laughs> yeah. some of the stuff's yeah, pretty true. intense <laughs> and unfair. That's the other thing where I throw in, I don't really buy necessarily the calling thing, like that they're all just hooked up on this like big Skype call because mm. Clan Rorkin has, you know, the, and over in the Hammerfell side, want nothing to do with the with the ones that are over in uh, Resdane or, or in Skyrim. And they're obviously with things like the Ethereum Wars, they're not all like politically unified. So this idea that they're all like hopped up to, like into this big mind and they've all got different goals as well. Like, you know, they're all dealing with the War of the Crag kind of stuff. Like they're kind of not on the same like political wavelength as the ones that are dealing with the Chimer and Resdane. So it kind of seems, but then they also disappeared though. That's what's interesting. So I don't, I don't yeah. necessarily, and especially the idea that now they've expanded on it more, and then the the calling is just putting on a headset and calling kind of thing. It's like what they all put on a headset at one time, and they're like me 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 me, and then they all disappear. Like it kind of sounds a bit silly. So that, to me, maybe there is a bit more credence to that that it is some sort of chosen kind of punishment or something. But like, yeah, they, I don't There's know. There's also the idea that there was um or just the, the fact that there was ash found, like kind of these ash piles in one of the Dwemer ruins in Morrowind, in Tribunal. Um, but I'm not entirely sure it's related just because you don't really see it everywhere else. Like they all disappeared and then there's ash, but... I, I guess um, without going too off topic, just to sort of 
distinguish zero summing. Like leaving remains would not be a very zero summing kind of thing. That's what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah. That's yeah. what I'm so saying. Just, just, so just proof of that for people is that how Dagoth Ur, so the idea is he's in the dreaming dream sleeve world and he's imagining himself as reality. When you kill him, he just disappears. There's, there's nothing. There's, he's just gone because he's, he's, not, he's not even dead. He's just non-existent. If it's a, there is a difference, you know what I mean? Like, because he kind of never mm. was real. That's a whack. Well, you can't kind of you can't not bring up um, Arniel Gain from Skyrim. Yeah, I mean, when he starts tinkering around with Keening, he just vanishes to to nothing. Just whoop. It's a, th there's another thing. But he, you can summon him as a ghost, back. Correct. But then there's also so the Dwemer ghosts soul. around. So maybe there is yeah. like that. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, it's kind of. It was like when you zero sum, your soul stays behind. It does, yeah. I, it's it, I don't it's know. one of those things, mystery. I, I guess this is a good, like, we. I also want to reiterate to everyone that like, there are no definitive answers. It's really hard. You can only base off probabilities and sort of evidence and stuff. Like, it's not. You just don't know, and and it's really whatever the writers want to do. Like that'll end up being, but, at that, let's actually talk about um the the future of mm. um of the uh dwemer because a lot of people like we want to hear more about their disappearance or you know get little more tidbits of information and elder scroll six and i and i guess i can just throw out right now that if you were to pick um hammerfell hammerfell is like the best elder scroll six location if you want to explore the dwemer further because they have dwemer ruins and stuff and you'd also see a different kind of political Dwemer, like a, a politically separate Dwemer than compared to the ones we've kind of seen before. For sure, for sure. I, I mean, look, everyone knows the, the concept that is similar with Argonians, where it's like, you don't want to ruin the mystery too much. So, like, the idea of the Dwemer coming back en masse, like, hey, we're the Dwemer, we're all back now, we're a civilization, is not really something that I want in Elder Scrolls Six. Um, however... What I think is a really cool idea is actually if you had an experience with the Dwemer that was similar to what happens in Skyrim with Vaymina's Torpor when you go into the Dream Stride and you have like all this kind of vision that's, you know, it's a linear set. It's not like here's your open world of the past, go explore it. But it would be really cool if there was a quest where using some magical device, you kind of get transported back into that vision where you're looking around and you actually see Dwemer, so we'll get to see what they look like. You'll see them in some really cool settings, so everything's lively and moving around. Maybe there's some weird floating Dwemer thing off to the side that you don't really understand, but you don't really get any answers. Like, the whole concept of it is that it pleases people who want to see more of the Dwemer, but it also adds way more questions than it answers, mm. and that is what I think would be really cool. Yeah, we're talking about this before, is that I think the best way... so. The, the problem is if you just answer everything, it kind of, you lose the charm of Elder Scrolls because the charm of Elder Scrolls is that nothing is, you can be 90% sure, but there's that 10% wiggle room like you don't know. But so that every question, I think a good decide, design decision would be if you're, if you're going to answer a question, you need to leave the person with like five more questions. You know what I mean? Or like, because then it keeps expanding the wonder. So a really cool thing I could imagine is if you, if you did have like what you were talking about, like imagine if you even just got to have some, dream stride kind of vibe thing but like um whoever the 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 leader of the clan of rawkin or whatever at the time you see the leader having a conversation with a craft lord about building something or whatever just little tidbits but do you know how cool like i mm. think people would be so satisfied to actually see a conversation between two dwemer and like contextually you know what i mean like i think that would be a really um cool thing and it would just sort of leak out a little more information but then then you're asking more about like whatever he says might lead lead you on to ask more questions and like you know mm. i think the only situation that'd be better than that is if they become npcs oh, in yeah. Fallout Six, <laughs> for example <laughs> like i I'm, I'm not a fan of the um dwemer coming back as an actual race i mean i know they Falian reckons there's some in oblivion mm. he sees he's seen some in oblivion i would of course he could have like just like Gone, yeah, like. and especially because um, time in Oblivion doesn't work the same. Like, you know, Mirak was hanging around in Himaeus Mora's realm forever. Same deal could kind of happen. Like, just because Jaeger and Bagan came back, maybe the others are still chilling in Oblivion. I wouldn't mind that if they came back as 
one NPC or something, but I kind of like, it's a good that they don't have the answers. Like even, you know, how Jaeger and Bagan didn't understand the, like what happened to his entire race. Like he, it, like it wasn't completely. And what's interesting is he had the, uh, the book divine, divine metaphysics or whatever, how to, how to build the Numidian basically that he could, he could translate, but he wouldn't pretty sure it was that book, but basically he's refusing to, he's like, no, nah, that should have died with the, with the Dwemer and so on. But like, it would be cool wow. if somehow we had like a Dwemer do get a hold of that and kind of like give us a little tidbit, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you can just hop on the wiki and translate it yourself with the alphabet. <laughs> yeah, but I think it's like one of those things where it's like the book, you know, and it's like, a, like incomplete. It's not any, any elven person would just be able to kind of like wing it. Cause it's just kind of similar to their language. <laughs> But you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. I, I think they actually, I'm not sure if it's the exact text you're talking about. I have a feeling it might be, but there is a translated thing where someone actually did translate it to English and it's just all gibberish. Right. Like, yeah. like you know, because it looks yeah. cool to just go, oh, let's just type with this font, but it's just nonsense. Unless it's a really intricate code that someone could crack. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, overall, I wouldn't mind if they come back in Elder Scrolls 6 in some small capacity, but I kind of... I don't necessarily like it being like the whole focus of the of the game. I don't know. Maybe it would, maybe I'd be surprised. It would be such it would be such an important question to be answered that it would completely distract from whatever the main quest line yeah. happens to be for the Elder yeah. Scrolls 6. So it it would overshadow just about anything. And I I don't know if it's I'm thinking of Akavir, but I swear there's even Todd said something about liking the idea of keeping certain mysteries mysteries and yeah. just never answering them. That's why I'm fairly sure Akavir is 100% off the table because they don't want to explore Akavir yet, but I could be wrong in misquoting something that I've just tried. It does sound familiar. But... It does sound familiar. And, yeah. I, and I can agree it's kind of common sense that it's a bad idea when all of the stuff that... I mean, look at what they do with Fallout. They just want to put the Brotherhood of Steel everywhere that they can. Why would they want to get rid of all of the iconic Elder Scrolls stuff that exists in Tamriel that they can already play with, borrow from, bounce off, and just chuck you in, on a new continent and like kind of, you know, you'd have some stuff that's familiar, but most of it's alien. Yeah, 100%. Um, but uh, yeah, I think we'll, we'll have to, at one point we'll do a bigger discussion on um, the Numidium for sure. But I think that kind of needs its own video because we would need to talk about the Battle of Red Mountain and everything and like... Oh, for sure. I agree. I mean, I would love to talk about the kind of Dwemer ingenuity and, and some of the the stuff that they built or it's just cool when you well, read about... He, here's some questions like, that um, just... Because I was just going through, I've, I've got a list of questions that some people... We, we've sort of covered over some of them, but not... But, but um, okay. along general lines is basically asking about... So there's like Skylar here who's asking about how close was Dwemer transportation to our modern transportation, for example? Let's just tackle that one first. Um, like, I mean, they didn't have cars and stuff, but I mean, they had Dwemer airships, you know, like big Zeppelin looking things. Like that's pretty, pretty impressive. And I feel like given more time, I mean, they, they have robots doing their, you know, automatons. Like, I, I feel like if you can make, the gears and all of the axles and stuff you need to make a centurion work. I feel like a car's not hard, but I think I feel like it's more just like they don't put cars in because it would kind of kill the the feel. But I feel, I mean, they they could have had a teleportation network well, too, which is like the ultimate, yeah. <laughs> which is the ultimate travel thing. Who knows? I mean, the Majors Guild have some teleportation stuff. You've seen it done with you know the Sigic Zoom. Yeah, the yeah. Place. There's plenty. That's the other thing too. Is like Who a knows? lot of. It's, there's not a necessity for it, like um, for, for cars or stuff like that, because cars also require roads. But why do all that when you can just use magic and teleport? Or that's kind of why I guess they defaulted to airships, because you can just fly things everywhere. But um, there's mm, other things sure. too, like uh, Trey Perryman was asking. Um, actually, sorry, that was the wrong question, but we did talk about Jaeger and Bagan. But. Um, uh, Enderborn 272, nature of the Dwarven AI or security intelligence in Skyrim. I forget the name of the dungeon, but near Rift and near the border, the one with the giant bones. So so that's the one with that big, there's that glowy restoration looking spell thing. 
and it goes oh, in yeah. and it drops the floor and, and like we we speculated it's pure speculation like oh maybe it's some sort of security or ai kind of thing but um i guess as a whole like they if we were to just talk about how they how intelligent they were like or the automatons and so on are a form of ai like not in the full like do you know what i mean like the, the robots that we're building now we're like oh yeah they have good ai and, and stuff like that like they're, they're, they're moving around and they're learning to you know spatial awareness and stuff like that like the dwemer are at that level already with the with the centurions and and some of them are pretty complex structures and oh for sure and they actually are smarter because obviously uh in game like you're limited by in game mechanics but if you go and read some of the sources like there's this lab journal in skyrim that talks about um i think it's one of the spiders yeah, I just Let brought that up. I was just yeah, about to. Yeah. So it says here, further testing confirms that the spider seems to detect the intent of its controller in some way. You know, that, that's a line from it. So And it talks about hostile intent. So it will still attack, just not on site. During this morning's experiment, one of the newer guards was startled and drew his sword, and he was dead before anyone could react. So they are intelligent. Yeah, so, I mean... In, in, in regards to the nature of dwarven AI, I mean, like, I mean, it exists and it's intelligent and it's good. Like, I mean, yeah, I don't know what else to really like say about it, but, but they didn't program the laws of robotics in though, obviously, yeah, like, you know, but like yeah. they, they have stuff. I, here's another thing. So like, obviously their technology is crazy and with tonal architecture, they can um, do all kinds of stuff. They can just like zip out, like create these massive cities underground with all of these complex structures and they can create robots and metal that lasts forever but uh, riley kaufman was asking were there any dwemer mages or did they shun magic like they shunned religion i don't think they would have shunned magic at all because if no. you view magic as just a tool and it's just a it's a natural force that's coming through ethereus into mundus like why well, I mean, they had they had yeah. enchantments. I yeah. mean, that is magic, you know. You, I mean, uh, to them, maybe they didn't see it as like a out of this world. Like, oh my gosh, magic! Like you said, it's just a yeah. Tool. Well, it... um, you, I mean, you look at some of the things they made, even things you might not remember. But um, there are rings, like even there's a ring given to Nerevar, I believe. Oh, moon and star. The yeah. moon and star ring, um, and that was used. It was like the ring, an ultimate persuasion f- ring. So you could ally everyone together. That so that was really imbued well. with some. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was one of the um, one of the smiths. One of because the that's smiths. the because that's the ring but that it's... you use as the narrow ring to verify that you are the soul and there. Um, yep. You are Nerevar and Kane. but. Okay, so I'm just bringing up some info. It says the artifact was forged by one of the smiths of Dwemer Sorcerer, Priest, Kagranak, and Blessed by the Daedric Goddess, Azura. The in-game effects plus five for personality and speechcraft, epic. but the idea <laughs> is that it's like, <laughs> the idea is that it's yeah. epic for like persuasion. And if anyone else wears it, they die. That doesn't actually happen in game. That's just meant to be the law. Well, yeah, because you are the Nerevarine. So. Yes. No, no, I mean, if you put it on an NPC oh, right, in the right, game, right, right. they yeah. won't die. Yeah, yeah. Um. But, um, yeah, I, I don't think they would have shown me because a distinction that you kind of have to make with the Elder Scrolls world is that the Elder, like our world, we sort of see, which we probably shouldn't, but like science and sort of philosophy or even religious elements is in opposition. Whereas like souls are under, like for us, it's a concept in the Elder Scrolls world. They are undeniably a thing. Like you can almost treat it as a science and like, uh, like, you could look at a lot of things like this, but the difference between science and magic a lot of the time is just understanding. Like, for example, a TV, you know, is magic to some Amazonian tribesman that, you know, has just been living with spears and, and what do you call them, loincloths, like their, their whole existence. But if you learn the, 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 the magic, if you learn the ins and outs of the magic, it just becomes a science because you understand it. In the same way, like all of these... You know, you know what I mean? I'm kind of getting at. So it's, yeah. 100%. 100%. So um, when you come in, it's the same kind of thing with the gods. It's like they're undeniably real. It's just kind of whether you think think of, the, of them as gods or not. Because gods kind of implies like a, a, a worship, like a religion around it. That's what really makes it a, 
a god, if you know what I mean, versus... Yeah, and they also can change. I mean, the more you worship them, the more power they can kind of grow with. I mean, there's this really out there idea that the Duema even created their own god, not the Numidium, but like by worshipping logic and reason so intensely that they created some kind yeah, of like yeah. extra thing. Um, it's, it's a cool idea, but there's yeah. no like proof. Or like but it, you know, anything um, really. Yeah, I just think most people are talking about tiles, snow elves. I'm just trying to clean up any like last questions or oversight. Like we will talk about the new medium as a as a full episode another time for sure. Mm. I mean, I had a question that I saw. I think it was on Twitter that was asking about um, just the metal yeah. in general, like like dwarven metal, and like kind of what is it and stuff. And the answer is that. No one has been able to make dwarven metal except if you just melt down already existing dwarven stuff. Like people try and make fake uh, dwarven ingots and stuff out of bronze, but obviously bronze decays eventually, um, whereas dwarven stuff just doesn't. And what's really interesting is if you read, there's this text about the armors and stuff and the weapons they wear, and it says some interesting things. For example, like the boots, which are quite chunky. They're like, oh, they're lighter than they look. And so the metal had a kind of pretty good property. I mean, with the swords, they talk about how they didn't have to be all fancy and design it all curved like a like an elven dagger to slice through the enemy better. They just made it the stabbing shape to kill someone because the metal was so good. It's not that the blacksmithing was so good. It's just that the metal is so good. The blacksmithing was still intricate in the sense that a lot of the handles and stuff were like really customized to the to the to the user and, and stuff like that. But in terms of the actual shape of the weapons, it was just effective because dwarven metal is supposedly just really powerful stuff that just yeah. you know would stab right in. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, interesting stuff. Interesting thing too. Um speaking about dwarven like crafts and stuff and how like kind of pragmatic but joe mitchell here is asking about dwemer ruined dungeons there's these giant sculptures of heads and in similar fashions to the dwarven centurions and his thoughts are just they're mm. based off dwarven king yeah rule or whatever superior you know what i mean um and it's curious to see our opinions on it but um personally i just think it's an aesthetic design of the ruins like because just because the dwemer were not a religious people they were still obviously they were kind of like you could even argue like egotistical they 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 thought their their academic skills could sort of handle anything and so on so they they still want to glorify their own cultures and there's a sense of like art like that's the other thing like art and science aren't necessarily in opposition to each other either like you can kind of you know what i mean like they're gonna it's aesthetic they love it Oh, for sure. I mean, they, they definitely had big egos. I mean, look at the Ethereum Wars. Uh, it's not necessarily ego, but, yeah. you know, greed. They still had, they still emotions. They still made decisions. They still wanted to win, you know, um, which is interesting when you go back to the zero summing idea, because to say, no, I do exist. Mm. You need a big ego. Um, but obviously their logic was and reason was still, well, that, that, I would the, agree, stronger the than their too, ego. Is like the idea, at least between zero summing, you, you have to be a real it's it's not even just the ego it's the ability to simultaneously hold contradictions in your head as equally true it's it's a rational yeah, self-belief because like, as well basically because the I, I the idea is that most people that would come to this realization would skits it in zero sum like it's not it's supposed to be a super otherwise you'd have a lot more kimmers around flying around and changing jungles into grasslands yeah. or instead you know transcription yeah. errors or whatever <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah yeah for sure i mean i'll just note there was actually this one text and i reckon it's it's bs but uh what i'm going to imply is bs potentially but it was basically talking about uh, reports of dwarven centurions right and it was saying oh they can be uh, two times the size of man or a hundred times depending on what story you believe and obviously that immediately makes you think that some nord just you know really uh, exaggerated his story and embellished it and said there was a centurion a hundred times bigger than me but it would be cool if there one of those heads was actually some super super old super super big centurion i don't think so just because it's almost too big to be practical like based on the size of their yeah. caverns and stuff that and you, they made. you kind of um and but you just want to throw that out the there medium is like 
the biggest one. You know what I mean? Like they're like magnum opus. Yeah. Like it's kind of hard to hold. And also just like, I we can't go inside the head, but if the head's like solid metal or it's hollow or like there's a good chance that all these heads are just aesthetics. Like, cause are you, let's just, let's just toggle collision. We're going to fly. I mean, into clearly collisions. they like that face anyway. Cause it's on all of their armors. It's just all like that bust kind of style is everywhere. Oh yeah, it's super intimidating. Um, you can imagine in a war with the Dwemer that you wouldn't really, from a distance, be able to tell like what's a Dwemer yeah. and what's a robot because their armor is so like perfect and the helmets Actually, are so. Just thinking you know, about what similar. they look like too. Um, some people just asking, well, "What did they look like?" I had it because I, I wrote in the in the community post. I was like, "Oh, them in their Persian beards," but that the only yeah. way we have any no idea of what they look like is through Jaeger and Bagan, But he's pretty twisted and warped and obese and in this spider chair thing but um the ghosts yeah. the ghosts in morrowind and they all have that sort of like darius sort of style um I forgot what would you call it like beards but like the coil like it's like that weird coiled kind of look makes sense if you look up mm. but they, they all have that so that's why i was like oh persian beards and then you see a lot of people who um who, who uh who have made the fan art and stuff is sort of like they keep on using that sort of motif yeah. and so on. Um, but yeah, I mean, outside of that, it, sometimes the ghosts kind of look like Dunmerish. Do you know what I mean? Like they kind of look um, like in terms of skin, but that could just be a thing for the for the time. Actually, just gonna type in. Oh, yeah. absolutely, they do. Like they, they look like kind of actually. Like I mean, maybe Dunmer. maybe you could throw it in, but maybe the Dwemer's disappearance is what like Drew was talking about before. You know how it's like related to some sort of punishment kind of stuff because we only know that gray skin and the red eyes came in as a result of Azura's punishment and changed the whole race. I mm. don't know. Maybe. Uh, but I mean, Bagan is kind of more golden skinned, but he, I mean, I know he's warped. Oh, not golden skin, just normal yeah, skin. Yeah, but he's also he? sort of like, sickly looking. Like he's he's got the corporate tinted. thing, so it's kind of unreliable. And he's a messed looking individual. But, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, yeah, like there's some cool, like you'll, you'll see some like fan art and stuff and, and fan um, like in-game mods and models and stuff. But I, I like to think of them as the Persian beads. I like skin color. I, I don't really think it's the golden one, but I also don't really imagine them as dark elf proper gray you know what i mean because they're still like there's still the things we see of them are like ghosts but like yeah well i mean look if we get to see even just a little mirage of them in elder scrolls 6 like i was talking about then we can put that yeah. to rest we'll finally just see them and be like okay at least we know what they look like yeah that'd be sweet Plus, they just, you know, they kind of just look like elves that have spent way too long underground as well you know because like um, atmosphere has changed the way certain races look and you know they for example look at the sea elves mm. the sea elves adapt to their environment whereas you know what the Dwemer initially looked like maybe I don't know maybe it's evolved over time but they spent all their time on the ground like evolution uh, well like or like not evolution in in how like our world but like how that they've changed in ways is actually a lot more connected to instead of looking at it through that like sort of scientific sort of like our understanding of the world lens but in elder scrolls universe it kind of works differently especially with the like racial phylogeny stuff and how the interbreeding works it's completely different to here but just imagine how um like because just how the aelids just sort of kind of pop up and they've got they've been shown with like the sort of tannish kind of skin and the the blue eyes and so on or you go to snow elves they're just pale and like they're like albinos basically or mm. albinos <laughs> for, for the, the americans, americans listening, listening. Yeah. but like um they're they're kind of like distinct but there's not necessarily like and, and like you said for the marima they, they sort of seem to kind of match their environments you know what I mean? Mm, and then absolutely. there's, all, you, there's you those know. kinds of, that kind of like magical precedent is there. It is one of the explanations for the tower, uh, for White Gold Tower is that whoever rules it, it best suits it. Um, the, the land best suits the ruler's environment, if that makes sense. So like when the Aelids were ruling, it's all jungle. But then when man came, it turned the grass. That's a wacky Well, song. hold on. What, what, what happened when the... the the, actually, I'm going to butcher the pronunciation on this because I think I've been told, but the Sisi or the... Uh, 
I see Saisi, but I think it's Saisi. Anyway, the snake serpents from Akavir. What one of them was ruling at one point? So maybe it was slightly. Maybe I don't know some Mm. cherry blossoms, bro. I don't know. (laughs) Like, um, yeah, I I don't know. I I can't actually remember what that's based upon. Um, But there's a few. I I think it's just for that. In regards to that, not to go too off topic, but I, I just like the the Tiber Septum just came and then just turned it into grassland. It's just neat. It's 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 a MacGuffin just sort of like, I'm just going to make stuff happen because I want it to, but it, it's neater than all of the transcription error sort of stuff, you know, I think. Hmm. But uh, yeah, I think in regards to Dwemer, there's like, and we talk about like the Snow Elves, I guess they're cruel to the Snow Elves and they're blinding and so on. If we want to, does anyone have anything to add about well, I mean, they took them underground. <laughs> they fed them toxic fungus and turned and them I, into their And I guess they servants, probably used really. them as experiments, experiments and so on. Oh, for sure. They were definitely... People refer to them as cruel, but you can just imagine it as in... They're cruel as in they're purely, like, scientific. You can imagine them lacking empathy, but not cruel in the way that aliens sadistic, are said yeah, to be cruel. Sadistic. with their Yeah, with their gut gardens and, and all that kind they, of stuff. They also have... Um, just also to just throw out there on just sort of understanding how um, technologically advanced they were. So like they've got all the robots and the AI and they can manipulate the rules of the universe. They've got the, they've got their Skype headsets and then they can talk to everyone. But like also um, they can store memories and information and knowledge in the lexicons. So they've basically got oh, Elder yeah. Scrolls as like sort of like world's first hard drive, but they can just store information in lexicons that's directly accessible, which is... Uh, yeah, and they can also charge their soul gems using, I forget what it's called, but one of, like, the way that they charged their soul gems was from, like, a machine, wasn't it? I actually can't remember itself. I'm not sure. But I know that the lexicon, that's another thing there that would uh, would be great for an exploration in Elder Scrolls Six. that lexicons, things that can store memories or things like that, or information. Lexicons would be a great way to... It's literally inbuilt right there in ways to sort of learn more about the Dwemer without sort of just bringing them back. As oh, well. for sure. I mean, yeah, I did see this as a question, but it's like, I feel like, do you know, do you know another future podcast um, topic would be new races in the, in the Elder Scrolls and like kind of what the contenders could be or how could bring them in. The reason I bring that up is just because people like talk about Dwemer. Like, I wouldn't like the Dwemer in the Elder Scrolls as a playable race. I just don't think it really makes sense or gels well with the lore. Yeah. But say if they were, I get people ask like, oh, what, what would it be like? Like stats wise and stuff like that. But the problem is the, the, the area where they shine like sort of stats abilities wise, they're all like have been gutted from the mechanics because now it's just health, stamina, magicka. Like before, if there was like intelligence, like you'd kind of like, yeah, you'd amp that up or something like that. And you know what I mean? Like you don't really have a good way of I don't, and I don't know what abilities they'd have as a sign. Uh, I, I, I just want to uh, say I found my source. Yeah. I found my source. Yeah, it's with Arniel's quest when he gives you the warped soul gem. Um, I'm, just, I'm just reading off a wiki now. But it says Arniel tells you that the Dwemer used, used to use convectors to charge their soul gems and that some of these devices probably still exist oh. among Dwarven ruins. He needs two more charges after his own Ooh. initial charge to power so the gem. It, this might connect back to... So Drew was talking about the geothermal power and stuff like that, powering the... the so, so when you're close to the heart of Lorcan, it, it all works fine. Whereas if you go to the further away, it's not going to work. Whereas the soul gems are getting powered by something. But if it's not a soul, like a convector, like a convector sort of... You use magic. He gives you a spell called Arniel's Convection that you have to channel onto the convector until the st- until it, it's um, charged. I'm just going to double check what a convector even is. Yeah, a heating appliance that circulates warm air by convection. So like sucking in warm air for heat or the or fire, the fire spell, spell. But so sucking in <laughs> heat, sucking in geothermal energy again, creating like a sort of essence. Kind of mm-hmm. all related. I feel like it probably needs a video or something, but I feel like we can iron that all out and kind of make that into a more cohesive sort of thing. We'll have to do a bit of research for it, but like... Yeah. You see, these these podcasts are actually going to turn out into like the ultimate brainstorming for us to make new videos. How I mean, that's that? kind of why we wanted to start it too, is just these... You, you're talking about things that, you know, in a, in a way it's casual and open that you we can sort of 
talk about ideas or like particular things that won't make it into the video because the final products are polished and everything. Whereas we can just kind of have a more raw discussion. Speculative. But, um, and yeah, guys, like in the comments below, let us know what topics you're really interested in hearing, like a full podcast on. Obviously, like, you know, add your thoughts about this one. Um, but yeah, we'll put out community posts before we do them about what the topic will be and we'll try and get everyone's sort of insights and try and cover it in the discussion. We won't get to every single question as in like shouting them out, but we try and cover it in the topics that we're actually talking about. The, we're going to need another one for the Dwemer in terms of the Numidium because we kind of didn't want to make this ridiculously long. And if I, I knew if we talked about the Numidium and because the Numidium also exists outside of like just Dwemer focused stuff because all type of septums use of it and so on and, and it's other implications and then and Coda and people were asking for a Coda episode and stuff like that. We'll get to that. We'll, we'll get to some of the craziest stuff, but let's, <sighs> you know, let's not scare <laughs> off all the viewers straight away. <laughs> like, but yeah, I don't think anyone have any closing notes about all the right. Dwemer. No, Drew? No. Dwemer are cool. Dwemer are cool. We started off with like one of the greatest mysteries in the whole of Elder Scrolls. Only downhill so from here. We can here. be a bit more <laughs> certain. <Yeah. laughs> well, at least we can be more certain with uh, yeah, yeah. some future um, topics. I, I, guess, I guess try and think, guys, if you want new ones, try and think ones that are like the, for the next couple of topics. Think still more general, like bringing people in kind of thing. So like kind of like races or particular cultures or certain gods or something. Nothing. We won't cover the obscure, obscure stuff for a while. And don't worry, we'll, we'll one day get to uh, reading yep. the 36 lessons of Vivek and trying to make sense of that. <laughs> oh, for sure. Well, thanks so much, everyone, for watching. Um, it's It's been good. I, I quite enjoyed yeah, this podcast. I'm keen to do another one. So we will see you all next time. Oh, no, hold on. And we'll be back to nerd out with you all again <laughs> next time. <laughs>